And now we are moving to module 7. So we just did 5 modules on equations. Module 6 was on inequalities. Now we're going to put the two together. Module 7, we're going to be doing some equations and some inequalities. And we're going to be doing a new one. We're going to be doing an absolute value equation, learn how to solve that, and do an absolute value inequality. So before we can actually jump in and start solving absolute value equations and inequalities, we've got to do some review. So let's go to the whiteboard. All right, back in elementary school, I have written this symbol, and this means absolute value, and it has a number inside. And this would be read absolute value of 5. And I would ask you, what is the answer? And most of you would scream, the answer is 5. Very good. And if I write this expression, and I write absolute value of negative 5, and I ask you all what the answer is, you would all say that is also a 5. So you have been taught, any time you stick a number in an absolute value symbol bar, it makes the number positive. The problem is, do you know why it makes a number positive? Probably not. So let's first fix that. You have to know why those absolute value bars make numbers positive before we can get to solving. Alright, I could draw a picture of this. When I write absolute value of 5, that means I'm at the number line at the number 5. So I'm here. And when I put the bars around that 5, that is saying in words, how far am I? What is my distance from 0? And you would say, okay, I'm 5 away from 0, which is my answer. If I write this expression, now I'm at the number line at negative 5. So I'm here now. By putting these absolute value bars, I am saying in words, how far am I from 0? And you would say, I'm also 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, which is also positive. So those absolute value bars are taking the place of asking, how far is the number from zero? And how far something is, is a distance. And as you all know in real life, distance is always positive. When you drive to school, you don't drive negative 20 miles. I'm not negative 5 feet tall. Any distance or length is positive. So you have to think about these bars as saying, how far am I? And the rule is, absolute value is distance from zero. That's your phrase. That's your definition. Absolute value is distance from zero. This is your absolute value. There's my equals. This is is. So this five, this number here represents how far am I from zero. If I'm at five, I'm five from zero. Absolute value is, this is my distance from zero. If I'm at negative five, I'm also 5 from 0. So that's what absolute value represents, a distance from 0. So now we're going to learn how to solve an absolute value equation. So this is an absolute value equation. And it's very obvious it's an absolute value equation. It's got the symbol, the absolute value. I call them touchdown bars. We have seen so far in our solving equations that if we have a symbol, we like to get rid of it. And if we recall, if I have a simple linear equation like this, we get rid of parentheses by distributing, because we've learned in math parentheses means multiply. We've seen a simple equation like this. To get rid of a square root, we do the opposite, we square. Parentheses are symbols that mean multiply. They mean an operation. Square root is an operation. An operation is something you can do to a number. Well, guys, there is no way to do absolute value, to get rid of it. It's not a parenthesis. You don't multiply to get rid of an absolute value. It's not a square root, so you don't square it to get rid of it. So the problem here is to solve this equation, to get rid of those bars, there's no magic trick. We've got to think about what this means. It goes back to this phrase. This says absolute value is, there's your is, so this 10 is your distance from zero. If you memorize that phrase, you got it. Absolute value is distance from zero. 
I am saying I am 10 from 0. So everybody imagine this. I'm at a number line. I am at 0. I'm asking you to move me a distance of 10. Where can you move me? Well, if you move me to the right, I would be at positive 10. That would be a solution. But if I'm at 0 on the number line, can't you move me to the left? And if you move me to the left, I could also be at negative 10. So the way we solve this equation is we think about the number line. Absolute value is always your distance from 0. I'm telling you what your distance is. I'm saying move me 10. Move me a distance of 10. I could go to the right 10, and I'd be at positive 10. I could go to the left 10 and be at negative 10. We don't have one solution. We have how many? Two. Now we can check those. So everybody look closely. Let's take positive 10 and put it in this spot. When you put 10 in absolute value bars, what does it come out? It comes out positive. It checks. If we take negative 10 and put it in this spot, negative 10 in the absolute value bars, what does the bars do to that number? It makes it positive. It checks. So now you learn an important thing. Absolute value equations can have how many solutions? Two. I know you're going to say, but Ms. Black, that's x to the first power. It's linear. Yeah, but it's not a normal linear equation. It's an absolute value equation. And it can have now two solutions. Go to this one. This says absolute value equals negative 10. If you think about my definition, absolute value is, is means equals, this is your distance from 0. So think about it as a picture. I'm at a number line. I'm at 0. I'm telling you, hey, guys, move me a distance of negative 10. Can you physically do that? Can I be standing and move a distance of negative 10? No, you cannot. Because distance has always got to be what kind of number? Good. Distance should always be positive. So by this distance being negative, you can't do this. And if you can't do this, is there a solution? No, there's not. There is no solution. Now I know what you're thinking. You're saying, Miss Black, you're wrong. The answer is 10. Think about it. Let's check it. If we put 10 in this spot and we do absolute value of it, when you put a number in the bars, it makes the number come out positive. Is that positive? No. So 10 wouldn't check. So you're saying, okay, the answer's got to be negative 10. Well, again, guys, think. If you take the absolute value bars and put negative 10 in that spot, the bars, the absolute value bars, are going to make this number become what? Positive. Is that a positive? No, it's not. So there's no number you could put in absolute value and make it spit out a negative. Because absolute value is a distance, and this number on the right side has got to be positive. So because this is a distance and it's negative and that doesn't exist in our life, there is no answer here. So now we learn we've got to be very careful with absolute values. Absolute values can have two solutions. Absolute values can have no solutions. So if you think back to our list of equations we've been solving, we've been talking about certain equations you always must check to see if the answers work because they may be extraneous. Well, we learned at the very beginning, module one, you've got to check a rational equation because if a fraction has a denominator zero, it's got to be thrown out. We learned in the preceding modules that you have to check a radical equation because in a square root, okay? Now we're learning that you're going to have to check an absolute value equation. So rational, radical, and absolute values always must be checked because there may not be a solution. All right, let's try another one. All right, example three. The absolute value of x plus 1 minus 5 equals 3. It is an absolute value equation. It has the absolute value bars. Okay. To get rid of these bars, you just can't erase them. All right. We're going to talk about what you need to do. This one may not be so easy where you could just look at it and guess at the answer. So there's got to be a procedure. The procedure to solve an absolute value equation is, number one, to isolate the absolute value. Just like we learned to isolate the square root symbol, just like we learned to isolate the square, just like we learned to isolate the rational exponent, you isolate the absolute value. This is what's stuck inside the symbol. This is our problem. The 5 has nothing to do with it, so we're going to move the 5. So you always isolate your absolute value. 
You can't move the one, it's stuck in a symbol. What you've done by isolating it is you now have that definition. You have absolute value is, and this is your distance from zero. Make sense? I'm telling you what's inside here has got to be a distance of eight from zero. And I can look at a number line and think about that. All right, if I'm at zero and I say move a distance of eight, I can move you to the right and you could be a positive eight, but I can move you also to the left and you could be at negative eight. And that's how we're going to get rid of the bars. Because this distance can move either to the right or left, to get rid of these absolute value bars, you're not going to write one equation, you're going to write two. There is no magic trick to get rid of those bars. You are not multiplying to get rid of those bars. You are not squaring to get rid of those bars. To get rid of those absolute value bars, you're going to rewrite this as two equations. And the first equation, what's inside x plus 1, is going to equal positive 8, because that means I moved to the right 8. And the second equation, what's inside x plus 1, is going to equal negative 8. And that's moving to the left. So if you look, the only thing that changed symbols is the 8. 1, 8 is positive, moving to the right from 0. 1, 8 is negative, moving to the left. Because that's your definition. Absolute value is the distance you move from 0. And if I tell you the distance is 8, and I say move me 8, I can move to positive 8, I can move to negative 8. What you've done is now we're no longer an absolute value equation, we're a simple linear. We'll solve it. And because we just saw a minute ago, there's no guarantee with absolute value your answers can work. We're going to have to do a check. And we're back to the same old song and dance. How do you check a solution? You go back to the original and you substitute. Let's use 7. 7 plus 1 minus 5 equals 3. Remember with checking, nobody moves. You work the left side and hope it becomes the right side. Well, in a symbol, you can't have two numbers, so we're going to put those together first. Now, we could do this. There's a number in here. We understand what this means. Absolute value of 8. How far am I from 0? I am 8 from 0. Is 8 minus 5, 3? Sure it is. That checks. That's a solution. Now, we've got to check the other one. So again, we go back to the original. Instead of using 7, we're going to use negative 9. Remember, there's two numbers inside here, so you have to work that first. So you leave the absolute value. Negative 9 minus 1 is negative 8. What is the absolute value of 8? This is saying, how far am I from 0? If I'm at negative 8 on the number line, I'm 8 away from 0. And is 8 minus 5, 3? Sure it is. So if you look, we have two solutions. So all you're going to do, ladies and gentlemen, to solve an absolute value equation is step one, isolate the absolute value. Get the absolute value on the left side by itself. Once you do that, you're always going to write it as two equations. One of the distances is going to be positive. One of the distances is going to be negative. And then solve. All right, let's try one more. All right, our last one, 2 absolute value, 4 minus 5 halves x plus 6 equals 18. All right, it's obviously absolute value. I see the absolute value bars. I can't look at that one and figure out what the answer is. So I'm going to have to do the process, the procedure. Step one to solve an absolute value equation is to isolate the absolute value. Any numbers that are not inside the bars have to be moved. So we're going to move the 6 first by subtracting. And we're going to move this 2. This 2 is not in, front, in, in the absolute value. This 2 is connected by multiplication, so we're going to do division. So you move everything that's not part of the absolute value out of the way. Now that you have the absolute value isolated, you have the definition. This says absolute value is as equals, so this must be your distance from zero. 
So think about it. If I'm at zero on the number line, and I say move me six. Well, you can move me six to the right. I can be a positive six. You can move me six to the left and be at negative six. And that's why with absolute value, you don't write one equation, you always write two. It's now that you break it up into the two equations. And when you break it up, no longer do you have the bars. This can equal six, I can be moving to the right. And what's inside the absolute value can equal negative six, moving to the left. So it's all based on the definition. Absolute value equals is how far you are from zero. If I say move me six from zero, I can go to the right and be a positive six. I can go to the left and be at negative six. Now the absolute value symbols are go gone. You have here a rational equation. It's got a fraction. It's up to you what you want to do first. I'm going to wipe out the fraction by multiplying by two because I don't like to deal with fractions ever. Two times four is eight. These twos are going to cancel, leaving minus 5x equals 12. And then I can solve it. I can subtract 8. Negative 5x equals 4. Divide by negative 5. And I get x equals negative 4 fifths. Or if you want to change that to a decimal, that's negative 8 tenths. I go over here. I don't like fractions. I don't like rational equations. So I'm going to multiply by the denominator 2. 2 times 4 is 8. These twos are going to cancel. That's going to leave a minus 5x equals negative 12. I'm going to solve this, subtract 8. Negative 5x equals negative 20. I'm going to divide by negative 5, and I'm going to get x equals 4. I have two solutions. But I'm warning you, with absolute value, you must not only solve, you must check. An absolute value equation can have no solution, so it's important you check. And if you go to your class set of notes, I have already checked this for you step by step. And yes, both values work. So this absolute value has two solutions. I'll see you in the next module when we change this from an equation to an inequality.